We're going to get straight into this one, guys. In this video, I'm going to be sharing the best level 1 through 50 starter build for a Twisting Blades Rogue. All the legendary aspects in this build will consist of codex-only legendaries, so nothing in this build will be dependent on drops. You can just instantly farm everything. A link to this build can be found in the description below. I want to give a shout out to Mobilytics for partnering up with me, allowing me to provide you guys with a detailed written guide. I'll be providing all my guides via Mobilytics moving forward. Oh, and by the way, Mobilytics does have an overlay feature allowing you to access all of my builds in game as well for even easier on demand reference. All right, guys, so I've pulled up the Mobilytics website, which has a list of all my builds pretty much mapped out in detail. You guys can uh, find the link to this in the description below. But jumping right into our level 1 through 50 starter build for Twisting Blades, we're going to be taking Puncture here uh, all the way into Fundamental Puncture. This is for the purpose of that on-demand guaranteed vulnerable, vulnerable application. We're taking Twisting Blades, of course, which... Keep in mind, has one of the best lucky hit rates in the game with the legendary aspect, which we'll talk about in a bit. We're going to take enhancing all the way to advanced twisting blades. This is going to give us some nice cooldown reduction, which is one of the key components to taking twisting blades. Then we're going to take sturdy, much needed close damage reduction here. Rogues are one of the squishiest classes in the game. We definitely need to take that. Siphoning Strikes next. This is going to give us some very, very nice sustain by healing us every time we critically strike. Since this Twisting Blades build is going to allow us to just constantly spam, we're going to get a lot of hits out, we're going to get a lot of crits out, and we're just going to get a lot of heal from that. Moving down to the Agility Skill Cluster, we're going to be taking Shadow Step. Not only does this have a 100% lucky hit rate, but this also gives us a very important unstoppable CC break and we get some nice movement speed for two seconds after using it as well. We're taking this to enhanced shadow step. This is going to give us really nice extra crit rate during the early game. And then we're going to be taking methodical shadow step, which is going to give us a very nice stun on the target that we shadow step to. Next, we're going to take another movement skill dash. This is going to have two charges. Really, really important, especially if you're trying to speed through the campaign. We're going to max out the weapon mastery passive, and that'll lead us to the subterfuge skill cluster. Dark Shroud, super important. This is going to give us up to 40% damage reduction. Again, one of the squishiest classes. We definitely need to take Dark Shroud. And then this is going to be taken all the way through enhanced to countering. This is going to give us that extra 8% critical strike chance. Really, really good, especially in the early game here. Then we're going to take Exploit, which gives us very nice burst on openers. And Malice, which is going to give us a very, very nice times 9% increased damage to vulnerable enemies. Vulnerable being a super, super important application. The imbuements we take are Shadow Imbuement. Now, this is like pretty much the king for the early game, especially leveling. This is going to allow us some very, very nice AoE damage. And when we kill targets that are affected by this Shadow Imbuement, it's going to give us a ton of energy back, which is super important in the early game via consuming shadows. So... Really, really important to take this in the early game. We're going to max that out, take it through Enhance, which gives us some nice additional critical strike chance against injured enemies that are affected by it. And we're going to get some extra vulnerable application from Blended Shadow Imbuement. Really, really nice to take. Really important in the early game, I would say. Then we're going to take Precision Imbuement here, which gives us additional crit, crit strike chance, which we're going to be rotating our Shadow Imbue pretty much off cooldown, having that extra critical strike chance really good. Down to the ultimate skill cluster, we're just going to be taking passives here, and we are going to be taking innerva Innervation, which gives us some nice energy back, because remember, we have very, very good lucky hit rates with Twisting Blades. We're taking Adrenaline Rush here, 5% increase regen, energy regen. We're going to be taking Haste. This is going to give us additional movement speed, which is super good for that early game. And we're going to get some nice attack speed also when we're below 50% maximum H uh, energy. Imp impetus we're going to be taking this just because in the early game especially when you're dungeon clearing you're going to be moving quite a bit a lot especially with double dash and shadow step and this is going to just allow us to deal some extra damage and 21 percent increased damage is actually pretty good considering twisting blades once you actually use the skill, the blades start spinning around you and you can actually move those blades around. And that first twisting blade skill that you use can hit just a lot of targets. So you can really take full advantage of this. Other than the early game, I, use, I probably would not recommend taking impetus. But again, just because in the early game, we're going to be trying to clear dungeons and, and we're just going to be moving from pack to pack. 
pack to pack a lot. I think this has a lot of value. The key passive we're taking is Victimize. Now, this is going against the traditional momentum, which you could definitely take. But I just feel like the extra energy regen as well as the damage reduction isn't going to be as necessary in the early game pre-50 or at 50. So this right here is just going to really take advantage of our lucky hit, giving us additional damage, which works pretty similar to Shadow Imbuement here. We're just going to be constantly popping up more explosions, just giving us more AoE damage. Specialization, we're going to be taking Inner Sight, and this might be a little bit more difficult against... Uh, mobs and dungeon clearing you're just gonna have to be really good utilizing your evade utilizing your dash utilizing your shadow step and if you can do that effectively you should have no issues but it does require a little bit of that um, targeting and tracking in the early game for dungeon clearing when it comes to single target it's just super easy pretty brain dead you just continually continually spam and try to dodge attacks going into the aspects here on the helmet we're going to be taking enshrouding aspect this is going to give us some pretty nice stacking damage reduction and quality of life allowing us to get some extra dark shrouds up this is a pretty good one here for the gloves we're going to be taking rapid aspect and this is going to give us some pretty decent attack speed here which is going to be a little bit more important in the early game as you level up when you don't have access to as much energy regen or some of your skills or your path Passives. This will give us a little bit more uptime on our core skills, allowing us to build that gauge faster and obviously some early early game damage through our puncture. For the boots, we're taking Wind Strikers aspect. This is going to give us very nice movement speed on our crits. We're going to be hitting the target a lot and we're, we are going to be procking a lot of crits or a good amount of crits. And this is just going to give us that nice movement speed on top of the movement movement speed we have, we have already, excuse me. On the chest piece, we're going to be taking aspect of disobedience. This is going to give us really nice early game armor. Again, this works really well with skills that are just hitting a lot. We're going to be hitting a lot with Twisting Blades. This just works really well. For the legs, we're going to be taking Aspect of Siphon Victuals here. This is going to essentially make it rain potions. Not going to have any, <laughs> any issues consuming potions here. Remember, we have a very, very, very nice high lucky hit rate with, with our Twisting Blades in this build. So this will be really, really nice uptime on the potions. For the two-handed weapon, our bow weapon, we're going to be taking Twisting Blades. This is going to maximize our damage with Twisting Blades. Ideally, you'd probably want to take a crossbow, by the way. For the one-handed weapon, we're taking Aspect of Unstable Imbuements, and this is going to allow us to essentially trigger our Shadow Imbuement when we use the Shadow Imbuement. And since we're a melee class and we're going to be in the middle of all the packs, we can take advantage of this legendary Aspect. For the other weapon slot, we're taking Aspect of Intercom. This isn't the ideal aspect, but remember we are limited to guaranteed aspects from the codex here, and we do stand still for a decent amount of time. When I say decent amount of time, I mean like one, two, three second windows for single target fights, even more. And this is just going to give us some extra damage because 5% every second is actually pretty good. That's 15 second. That's 15% if you're standing still for three seconds. Not the best, but certainly not the worst. For the ring slot, we're taking Aspect of the Corruption. This is going to give us 20% increased potency against vulnerable targets. We're going to be constantly applying vulnerable. This is going to further juice out our Shadow Imbuement. For the ring number two, we're taking Ravenous. This is going to give us some pretty good energy regen for killing vulnerable targets. And we're going to be killing a lot of vulnerable targets with our Shadow Imbue and Puncture. And, amu and the amulet slot here, which gives us a 50% bonus effect, we're taking Edge Master's Aspect, which will give us a 15%, assuming that you have the lowest roll taking this from the Codex, a 15% increased damage based off of your primary resource. This is a very nice aspect to take for Inner Sight users. We're not going to really go over the stat priority here because this is really self-explanatory and you guys could just check it out in the build. You're probably going to be referring back to this if you want to copy this anyways, as well as the gems. So that pretty much does it for this build breakdown. So if you guys enjoyed that, if you found it helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out the build again via Mobile Lytics in the description below. And I'll see you in the next video. Oh,